Welcome to the Power Integrations course, Fixing a Flyback Supply Where the Output Fails to Reach Regulation. Before starting this course, you should have built a flyback power supply and through the bring up procedure, identified that the output is not reaching regulation and or is hiccuping, also known as the auto restart protection mode. This could be happening immediately upon startup or when the output load is applied. During this course, you'll need the following equipment, a programmable AC source or a variac, a DMM, an electronic load, an oscilloscope with one high voltage probe, and a current probe. Common causes for a power supply to not start up or to enter auto restart are a poor layout around the undervoltage pin, the AC source is undersized, load characteristic, the output diode is reversed, there is a failed or incorrectly designed clamp circuit, the feedback path is open, incorrect feedback component values were used, an output and or bias winding diode has a long reverse recovery time, there is excessive capacitance on the drain node, specific to designs based on the top switch device family, the transformer bias winding is disconnected, and lastly, the polarity of a transformer winding has been reversed. Some power integrations devices include an undervoltage lockout feature, which prevents output glitches upon startup by sensing the voltage on the DC bus and delaying startup until the input reaches a user-defined voltage. Noise on the undervoltage pin or using a value of undervoltage resistor that is too large could cause a device to not start up properly. First, make sure that the value of undervoltage resistor installed on the board matches with PI Expert. If it does, or if your design doesn't include an undervoltage resistor, then verify if leakage current into the undervoltage pin is causing the problem by connecting a 100k ohm resistor between the bypass pin and the undervoltage pin on the underside of the board. Then test again. If this solved the problem, then verify that your board is clean of flux and that no high voltage traces are in close vicinity to the undervoltage trace. For example, in this design, the ENUV trace is extremely close to the high voltage drain trace. This allows noise coupling and leakage currents between the drain trace and the ENUV pin. To solve this problem, you'll need to relay out your board, or alternatively, keep the 100k ohm resistor in your design. For layout guidelines, see the applicable power integrations device datasheet. Check that the AC source is rated to handle the expected input power of your supply. If it's not, the source will limit the power provided to the converter and prevent proper startup and regulation. As a rule, your AC source volt amp rating should be greater than twice the output power of your supply. An undersized AC source is typically an issue with high power designs. Next, we'll examine the load on the power supply. Any power supply should be designed to deliver at least the maximum output power required by the load. If at startup the output voltage doesn't reach regulation within a specified auto restart on time, the power integrations device will enter auto restart protection mode. This is designed to prevent components from being damaged by limiting the average power delivered by the supply in a fault condition. The specific auto restart on time can be found in the relevant power integrations device datasheet. Nonlinear loads, which can cause this condition at startup, include motors, which draw large currents until they reach full speed, or filament lamps, whose effective series resistance at startup is zero and increases gradually as they heat up. In both cases, the output voltage may not reach regulation within the auto restart on time. For example, we have here a 12 volt 1 amp RD91 board. Although this power supply is able to deliver 12 watts minimum, it is unable to start up with a 10 watt halogen lamp load. To verify if the load is causing the problem, first replace it with an electronic load set to draw the maximum current specified by your power supply design. If the power supply correctly starts with the electronic load, then the issue is that the actual load is drawing a higher power than the supply is designed to deliver. Characterize your load again to confirm that your power supply specification is correct. If your load is nonlinear at startup, then adding a soft finish circuit can give the output voltage sufficient time to reach regulation. 
If your power supply still does not start up with an electronic load, then the next action is to verify that the output diode has not been inserted backwards. If it has been reversed, replace the diode with a new one and retest your board. If the output diode is not causing the problem, next check that the diodes in the clamp circuit are in the correct orientation. If they're not, replace them with new components installed properly. To identify if the hiccuping condition is caused by an improperly designed clamp circuit, replace the dissipative portion of your clamp highlighted here with a 200 volt Zener diode. Now retest your board. If the hiccuping output problem is resolved, then the issue is being caused by the clamp. Please see the course notes for more information on resolving this issue. The next area of our board to check is the feedback circuit. If for any reason the power integrations device does not receive feedback for longer than the auto restart on time, the device will enter auto restart protection mode. This will always happen when the feedback loop is open. First check that there is no debris on the back of the board which may be shorting out a feedback component such as the optocoupler LED. Also, check that there are no cold solder joints in your feedback circuit by touching up each connection with a little extra solder. Cold solder joints often appear as normal connections but provide intermittent connectivity at best. If your design uses a secondary side feedback circuit, then verify that the feedback components installed are as specified by PI Expert. Feeding back too little current to the power integrations device will cause the device to enter auto restart mode. This can happen when the opto series resistor value is too high, or in Zener based feedback circuits if the Zener voltage is too high. Finally, if using an LM431 reference IC, a disconnected upper sense resistor can also cause the device to enter auto restart. If your design uses a primary side feedback circuit instead of a secondary side circuit, then verify that the values of the resistors in the voltage divider match those specified by PI Expert. Next, verify that all output diodes are either ultra fast or Schottky types. Power integrations devices implement a leading edge blanking feature which disables the current limit for a fixed period immediately following MOSFET turn on. This prevents the initial current spike from triggering the current limit and prematurely terminating the switching cycle. However, if the turn-on spike is larger than normal, it can still trigger the initial current limit of the device and cause it to limit power transfer to the output. Using slow recovery diodes on the output windings will increase reverse recovery current. This current flows backwards into the secondary winding, is transformed through the turns ratio back to the primary, and increases the initial turn-on spike seen by the MOSFET. This may trigger initial current limit, decreasing power delivery and preventing the supply from reaching regulation. Visually inspect all output diodes to ensure that a fast or standard recovery diode has not been used. If a wrong type has been fitted, replace it with either an ultra-fast or a shot key and retest. A bias winding diode with a long reverse recovery time can cause a similar problem, though this is less common when a series resistor is used in the circuit. If a slow recovery diode is used in your design, try replacing it with a 1N4937 rectifier. If this solves the problem, then refer to PI Expert to verify that the bias winding diode you've used matches the specifications given. If it doesn't, then replace your bias winding diode with the one recommended by PI Expert. Excessive capacitance on the drain node can also cause large turn-on current spikes. This capacitance can come from transformer winding capacitance or large RC snubbers across the device MOSFET or transformer primary winding. To verify if capacitance is causing a problem, we'll need to monitor the drain's switching voltage and current. First, turn off and disconnect the AC input and discharge the input capacitor. Break the MOSFET drain trace on your board and insert a wire current loop to monitor drain current. Be sure to make this break between the drain pin of the power integrations device and any clamp components in your design. Measuring from other points along this trace will not allow you to properly diagnose all issues with your design. Connect a high voltage oscilloscope probe from the drain node to the source pins to measure the switching voltage across the MOSFET. 
Also connect the current probe on the current loop you just made. Now reconnect the AC input and set the input voltage to the maximum for your design. Configure your oscilloscope to view both the MOSFET voltage and current and set it to normal trigger mode. Trigger on the rising edge of the MOSFET voltage to ensure stable readings. Study the datasheet for your power integrations device to determine the leading edge blanking time in your design and the initial current limit at the end of leading edge blanking. Then, measure the current level you see through the MOSFET after the leading edge blanking time. Compare this value with the initial current limit in the datasheet. If the value you measure is greater than the initial current limit, then you will see an extremely brief current pulse terminated at the end of leading edge blanking time. This can cause power delivery problems. Disconnect all primary side snubbers from your circuit and remeasure the initial current after leading edge blanking. If this solves the problem and the initial current spike decreases to acceptable levels, you'll need to decrease the capacitance of your primary snubber circuits. If the problem remains, then you'll need to verify that the transformer winding capacitance is not too large. If using a top switch device, verify that the return, the zero volt end, of the transformer bias winding is connected to the primary side return. This is the negative terminal of the input capacitor. If the transformer bias winding is left floating, the optocoupler has no supply voltage and therefore no feedback signal can be provided to the power integrations device, causing the device to enter auto restart mode. If your board is still not reaching regulation, the last thing to check is the polarity of your transformer windings. If one has been reversed, that winding will appear as a forward winding. This prevents the power supply from operating as a flyback converter, limiting power transferred to the output. Here we see the voltage and current waveforms from the drain of the MOSFET of an RD91 board. On the left side are the waveforms of a correctly operating flyback supply and on the right are the ones seen when the secondary winding is reversed on that same supply. With the time base of both waveforms set to 20 microseconds per division, we see that the reversed winding current pulses are much shorter than the normal transformer. Expanding in, we measure the MOSFET on time of the normal pulse to be approximately 4 microseconds, while the reversed winding transformer pulse is only 400 nanoseconds. If you see a similarly shortened on time in your design, then it's likely one of your transformer windings has been reversed. Thank you for attending the course, Fixing a Flyback Supply, where the output fails to reach regulation. If you have any additional comments or questions, please email piuniversity at powerant.com.